We have already introduced the topological sort problem and talked about its application to job scheduling or navigating a path to take all your required coursework while respecting the prerequisite constraints. We also claim that any directed acyclic graph has a topological sort. In this video, we will see why this is true and give an algorithm to find a topological sort. The algorithm will again be a simple modification to depth first search. If you haven't already watched the video on detecting a directed cycle in a graph, I encourage you to watch that first as it develops some key properties of depth first search that we will again use here. The algorithms to detect a directed cycle and find a topological sort really go hand in hand. This makes sense as a directed cycle is the only obstruction to a graph having a topological sort. Let's first recall the topological sort problem. We want to order all the vertices so that u comes before v in the ordering for every edge directed from u to v in the graph. If a graph has a directed cycle, then no topological sort is possible. But otherwise, a topological sort always exists. A topological sort is not, necessar not necessarily unique. More than one order satisfying the requirements can be possible. So for this example graph here, one possible topological sort is 4, 5, 2, 0, 3, 1. So a way to visualize that this is a topological sort is that when we put the vertices on a horizontal line from left to right in the topological sorted order, then all edges go from left to right. We can actually directly find a topological sort by our old friend depth first search. It just takes a one line modification to the code to do this. And we also already have the background to understand why the algorithm works from our discussion about detecting a directed cycle. So we again want a version of that first search that visits all the vertices in the graph. So we're going to have an outer loop, which here I call DFS, that looks as follows. We have a Boolean array called marked, which is initialized to be everywhere false. And we're going to go through the vertices in order of their names and run DFS visit on any vertex which is not already marked. So the real, workhorse, the real workhorse of the algorithm is DFS visit. So I'm going to focus on that. But it's important remember, to remember that we also do this outer loop. OK, so now let's look at DFS visit. This is really your plain old vanilla depth first search. But we have added some extra variables in order to keep track of the order in which we visit vertices. There are actually several orderings we can derive from depth first search based on whether we look at when we start visiting a vertex or when we finish visiting a vertex. So you can find all this code at the given Godbolt link. I've actually simplified the code somewhat for the slide so that everything fits. The code at the Godbolt link will both detect a cycle if there is one and otherwise output a topological sort. So the first ordering that we can consider is called pre-order. So this is an ordering of the vertices by the time we start DFS visit on them. So to store this, we just have a vector called pre-order. And right when we start DFS visit on a vertex, we push back that vertex to this vector pre-order. So at the end of depth first search, pre-order will hold the vertices in the order in which we visited them. The second ordering we consider is called post-order. This is an ordering of the vertices by the time that we finish DFS visit on them. So we can again just have a vector called post-order. And after, the, after DFS visit, well, when DFS visit is about to terminate on a vertex, then we push it back to the vector post order. So at the end of depth first search, post order will hold the vertices in the order that, that we finished visiting them in depth first search. The third ordering that we consider is called reverse post order. So this is just post order, but in reverse. So in other words, the last vertex to finish DFS visit 
will be the first vertex in reversed post order. So to store the reverse post order, we use a list instead of a vector, and we call this list reverse post order. So now when DFS visit is about to terminate on a vertex, we push the vertex to the front of the list. So in this way, the vertices are reverse ordered by finishing time. So it's actually reverse post order that turns out to be relevant for a topological sort. The key fact is that if the graph G is a DAG, then reverse post order is a topological sort of the vertices. Okay, so let's again first look at an example, and then we will see why this fact is true. So let's do depth first search on this graph. Remember that the path we take in depth first search depends on the order in which we consider vertices in the for loop of DFS visit. And that, in turn, depends on the exact representation of the graph by an adjacency list. So to be explicit about this, here is the adjacency list that we're going to use for this example. Now we're going to want to keep track of when we start visiting a vertex and when we finish visiting a vertex. So I will do this where it says on stack on the top right. So I put a vertex number in green when we start visiting it, and I'll put it again in red when we finish visiting it. OK, so with that set up out of the way, let's get started. Initially, all vertices are unmarked. And in the outer loop of DFS, we go over the vertices in, in order, so starting from 0. So we're going to start at vertex 0 and call DFS visit on vertex 0. So when we call DFS visit on vertex 0, so of course it goes on stack, we indicate that with the green 0 there. And from vertex 0, we first consider vertex 1. It is unmarked. So now we go and visit vertex 1. I put a blue circle on vertex 0 to indicate that DFS on vertex 0 has not yet terminated, but we're not actively working in DFS visit 0. We're actually in a call to DFS visit on vertex 1 right now. So. Not much happens in the call to DFS visit on vertex 1. It has no outgoing edges, so there's nothing to do, and the call terminates. So we record this with the red one here. So vertex 1 has gone off stack. DFS visit on vertex 1 has finished. So now we return back to the call of DFS visit on vertex 0. We continue in the for loop, and we next consider vertex 3. So now we're in the call to DFS visit on vertex 3. Uh, and I put the green 3 there to indicate that uh, this call has started. Um, but And for vertex 3, there are no outgoing uh, edges to vertices that are not already marked. So the call to DFS visit on vertex 3 also terminates. So I indicate that by the red 3. And we actually go back to the call of DFS visit on vertex 0. But we've actually considered all of the out adjacent neighbors of vertex 0. So now the call to DFS visit on vertex 0 terminates. Okay, So I indicate that by the red 0 there. OK, so now the call to DFS visit on vertex 0 has finished. So now we actually go back to our outer loop. And we consider the next unmarked vertex, which is going to be vertex 2. So now we call DFS visit on vertex 2. Vertex 2 goes on the stack. Um, but all of its out adjacent neighbors are already marked. So this call just go ahead and terminates straight away. So now we return back to the outer loop, the DFS function, and the next unmarked vertex that we consider is vertex 4. So now we start DFS visit on vertex 4. So we have the green 4 there. We first consider vertex 5, which is unmarked. So we call DFS visit on vertex 5. But vertex 5 has no out adjacent members. So this call terminates. We go back to DFS visit on vertex 4. But all of its other neighbors are already marked. So then this call terminates as well. So now you see on stack, we have all the 
starting times and finishing times of DFS visit for every vertex in the graph. So the pre-order is just going to be the order of the green numbers going from left to right. So that's going to be 0, 1, 3, 2, 4, 5. The post order is just going to be the red numbers in order going from left to right. So that's 1, 3, 0, 2, 5, 4. And the reverse post order is just the reverse of the post order. So that's 4, 5, 2, 0, 3, 1. So you see by keeping track of when the call to DFS visit starts and finishes, we get all of these pre-order, post-order, and reverse post-order. So we can see that the reverse post-order actually gives a topological sort. So this is actually the same topological sort that I used at the beginning of the video. OK, so now that we've seen an example, let's see why this is the case. Why does reverse post-order give a topological sort? OK, so we want to show that if G is a DAG, then reverse post-order is a topological sort. So what we need to show is that if there's an edge from u to v and the graph is a DAG, then DFS visit on vertex u will finish after DFS visit on vertex v. So if that's the case, then u will come before v in the reverse post order. And so the constraint of the topological sort condition will be satisfied. OK, so we want to show that if there's a directed edge from u to v, then and the graph is a DAG, then DFS visit of u will finish after DFS visit of v. OK, so to, to show this, we consider two cases. The first case is that DFS visit on vertex u starts before DFS visit on vertex v. OK, so in particular, this means that vertex v is unmarked when DFS visit on vertex u starts. And now remember, we're also assuming that there's an edge from u to v. So since there's an edge from u to v, we're going to call DFS visit during the call to DFS visit of u. So we know that DFS visit on v will be called at some point during DFS visit of, of u because there is this edge from u to v. So this means that DFS visit on vertex v must terminate before the recursion can return back to the call of DFS visit on u. So DFS visit on u must finish after DFS visit of v. And you know, this is what we wanted to show. OK, so in case one, we actually don't need to use the fact that the graph is a DAG. That's going to come in case two. So let's look at case two now. Case two is that DFS visit on vertex V starts before DFS visit on vertex U. So case two, we can further subdivide into two cases. In case two A, DFS visit on vertex V finishes before DFS visit on vertex U starts. So in this case, then clearly DFS visit on vertex U is going to finish after DFS visit on vertex V finishes. So we're fine. The claim is true here. So case 2B is actually the really interesting one. So in this case, DFS visit on vertex U starts before DFS visit on vertex V finishes. But in DFS visit on vertex U, we're going to consider the edge from vertex U to vertex V. And this is going to be a back edge because the call to DFS visit on vertex V is still active. right? That's because the assumption here is that DFS visit on vertex U starts before DFS visit on vertex V finishes. OK, so that means that we found a back edge. And we know from the last video that if there's a back edge, then the graph has a cycle. So this case 2B cannot actually happen because we're assuming that our graph is a DAG. OK, so that finishes the whole proof. OK, so let's summarize what we found. We have given an algorithm to find a topological sort in any DAG. 
a graph with a cycle cannot have a topological sort. So this actually shows that a graph has a topological sort if and only if it is a DAG. And we've seen that topological sort can be found by depth-first search, namely by just running depth-first search and keeping track of the finish times of DFS visit and outputting the vertices in reverse post order. Reverse post order gives a topological sort. And since we know that the running time of depth of search is order of the number of vertices plus the number of edges in the adjacency list model, this actually shows that we can find a topological sort and a DAG in this same amount of time.